In last week's video, we talked about using build systems to run external programs from Sublime Text for doing things like running your build tools to compile and run your program, or maybe just running an external program that you need executed for some particular reason. There are some gotchas to using build systems that can catch you unawares if you're new to using them. So in this video, let's talk about some common pitfalls in build systems. <music> Hello fellow Sublime Text Fanatics, Odat Nerd here, and today's video is all about some of the common problems that you can encounter while using a build system. Before we get started though, as a reminder, if you're finding these videos helpful, please thumb and subscribe as you deem appropriate. And if you have any questions or comments on any of these videos or suggestions for videos you'd like me to make, you can drop those down in the comment section below or hit me on Twitter at Odat Nerd. And Hopefully I'm pointing in the correct direction, otherwise I look like a big dope right now. Now, as I said, there are some common pitfalls that you can have when using a build system. The number one common pitfall is trying to run a program from a build system that is interactive. But we're not going to talk about that in this video because it's a fairly big topic on its own. So we're going to talk about other problems instead. But as a reminder, just right now, if you're trying to use a build system to run a program that asks you for input, that's not going to work for you. Wait for the next video. The problem in this one is a little more esoteric, and there are a couple of different ways that you can encounter it, and there's a few different ways that you can fix it depending on how you want to do it. So let's just go ahead and work through this the way that a person might actually encounter this. So I have this C program, as you recall from the previous video, and we have this build system, which uses TCC, the tiny C compiler, to compile and run a C program uh, lickety split without any extra steps. You don't have to compile and link and run. Just TCC minus run does the job. Now, you recall from last week that you can use tools build or press control B on Windows and Linux or command B on Mac OS to trigger a build. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. And unlike last week, we get an error message here. The error message in my case says TCC is not recognized as an internal or external command, operable program, or batch file. The error message you see will be slightly different if you're on Linux or Mac OS. It might say something like bash, I don't know what this command is, something along those lines. The rest of the output in this window is some diagnostic information that Sublime is telling you about how it tried to run the program so that you can figure out what went wrong. You, it'll tell you the actual command that it executed, because remember the build system had dollar $file in it. It shows you what directory ended up being the current directory, and it ends up showing you your path. Now, for those unfamiliar, path is perhaps a particularly big topic, but generally speaking, your computer hard drive is a big place, and there's a lot of files on it. Some of them are programs, some of them are not. So, Windows relies on you telling it a list of locations where you expect programs that you're going to run uh, from a command prompt or what have you, or even from the Windows run dialog in the particular case of Windows, without you having to specify the full location. So basically, when you run a program, Sublime, or Windows, I should say, looks through all of the locations in the path until it finds that program, then it knows to run it. And if it doesn't find it in any of those locations in the path, it's an unrecognized internal or external command. So ultimately, the problem is that the path, which is very long in this case, it will be very different on yours, depending on how you have your operating system set up, doesn't have the location that TCC is stored in, in my particular case. Now, I know I've installed it in D program files TCC. And if you want, you can pause the video and look at that gigantic pile of text and see if you see the text TCC appear in there. But as a pro tip, it doesn't. I removed it before I started recording the video. So what's the actual solution here? Now, there's a few ways to resolve this problem. One way would just be to modify the path. But let's set that aside for a second, and let's follow along with uh, advice that you might find if you were searching around um, on the internet. And the first advice that you might see is if TCC isn't in the path, 
you can specify the full location to the program you want to run, again, in this case, TCC, so that Windows doesn't have to look through the path to find where it is. You've just specifically told it exactly where to find it. So as I said, I installed this in D, Program Files, TCC. That's what I said, right? Now I'm using forward slashes instead of backslashes here. Windows is fine with using either one of them, but if you use forward slashes, you have to use two of them because they're special to JSON, so that's a pain in the butt. And also this path has a space in it, so much like dollar $file there, we're going to have to wrap it in double quotes like so but maybe uh, in the correct uh, orientation, so that when this command gets passed to Windows, it knows that that whole path is the one that it should be. Otherwise, it'll think program is one argument and file slash TCC is another, and that's a completely different problem. So now we've followed advice on the internet. We've specified the location to where we're supposed to get this thing, and we can come back to here and build, and now it should work, right? Now, now it says D program files TCC is not recognized as an internal or external command. It's saying the exact same thing as it was saying before, but now it's complaining about what it was that it couldn't run. So you go back to the internet and the next thing someone might tell you is they might have advice because they've had success using command instead of shell command. And you know, maybe there's something internally different behind the scenes, pro tip there totally is something different behind the scenes for these two things. So we could do perhaps the same thing here. We could just change this to be program files TCC. And as an added bonus, in command, we don't have to add double quotes around it because it's already its own single string that represents the program. Surely this will solve the problem. Now the error message is access denied. What the heck does that mean? This particular problem, unlike the last one, the last problem being we told it to run a program and we didn't know where to find it, in this particular case, uh, access is denied, and here it's WinError5. Under uh, Linux, it's, uh, I believe, Error13, and it's probably the same on macOS, but I haven't checked. That error is an access denied. Now, if you scan the internet for access denied errors, you're going to find a bunch of people telling you, you should modify the permissions on the directory because you don't have access to it. Access is denied. You don't have access. That makes sense, right? Kind of, but when you look, you're going to find that that's not actually the case. Now, I said that I installed TCC in D program files TCC. That's what I have here in the build system. But listen carefully. I said I installed it in that directory. The actual program itself is stored inside of that. So D program files TCC is actually the name of a directory. You can't run a directory. Windows doesn't let you do that. Access is denied. On other operating systems, as we saw when you use shell command, it doesn't know that it's a directory. It just thinks that's not a valid program. What are you talking about? So in this particular case, if I was to add a TCC on this, to say that in the directory, D program files TCC, please run the program TCC. I can push the build key and now it builds the way one might expect. And similarly, I can also modify this to add a TCC onto the end of it as well and come back here and when I build, it also still works. So two important lessons there. Whether you use command or shell command, if you want to, you can specify the full complete path, including the executable, to the program to be executed. Don't accidentally forget the executable on the end. Now here the executable is actually named tcc.exe, but the .exe part is optional. You don't have to put it in there if you don't want to. Now you might be saying, this works, but it's kind of unwieldy. I liked it better when it was just TCC minus run. And this problem gets worse if you use something like variants, which we're going to cover in an upcoming video, because in those you might want to pass slightly different arguments to the shell command. And now you're going to have to type D program files, TCC, TCC in a bunch of different places, and it just gets more ugly. Is there a better way to solve this problem? Yes, as a matter of fact, there is. You could modify the path on your system, but the path is kind of perhaps hard to modify if you're not sure how to do it. So 
can we resolve that problem directly in Sublime? And the answer to that, of course, is yes. Yes, we can. Now, there are two different ways that we can solve this problem from directly within Sublime without having to fiddle with anything external. And how you do that depends on whether you're using shell command or command. Okay, so these are two lines that we can add in here. Now, I'm going to comment this one out for the time being. If you are using the shell command method, as we are doing here, then you can use a key called env to solve this problem. This env key can also be used for command. You just can't use it to solve this particular problem for technical reasons we'll talk about in just a second. Now, this is basically you telling Sublime that when it runs this program, it should modify the environment of the program that it's running to have the extra values that you specify. You can add anything you want in here. The Python build, for example, changes the default I.O. encoding. Now, the environment variable we want to modify is the path. That's that thing that has the list of directories of where to find things. And as we can see here, the path, as we have specified, it contains two things. It contains $path, which is a variable that expands to whatever the path is currently set to and then a semicolon, and then the location of TCC. And in this case, you want the directory and not the name of the executable in here because you're telling it where to find the executable. You're not telling it where the executable actually is. Okay. Now, on Windows, you separate path segments with a colon like this because colons aren't valid in file names. If you're on Linux or Mac OS, uh, your path will be separated with a colon instead. And with this in place, we can actually take this back to the TCC option as seen here. And what's going to happen is when we hit the build, we're telling Sublime, please tell the Windows command interpreter to run TCC minus run and the name of the current file. And when Sublime does that, before it runs... So when it runs the Windows command interpreter, it also modifies the path that the command interpreter has while it's running to include the location of TCC. And the result of that is when I press the build key, it works, even though the path is not you know, full in the shell command entry up there. Now, if you're using... Instead, if you're using command in place of this, then again, you might say, well, okay, I don't need any of this. I'm going to modify the path the same as I did for shell command, and that should work for me, right? And the answer is no, it, it doesn't. Now, there's something I want to point out here, and that is when you look in the uh, build output there, it says the path is dollar $path, semicolon, D program files TCC. That might make you think the path is wrong. Actually, behind the scenes, Sublime gathers this debug info that it's going to display in the build output before it does any manipulations to anything at all. So what you have, the path you see here is the variable from the build system. As far as the build is concerned, it actually ran with the correct path. It's just sort of a, it's a bug that's being logged in the issue tracker. So you may not even see this depending on when you're watching this video it's the correct path it just doesn't look like it is but this didn't actually work for us and the reason for that is as I said when you use shell command you're telling sublime to run the Windows command interpreter to execute TCC if you use command you're telling sublime run TCC and so it tries to run this program and then while this program is running modify the path like this but that doesn't work because the program can't be found. So in the particular case of using command, you want to use this path key instead. The path key, unlike the env key, directly changes the path of the, ex of the executable as it's about to be executed. Um, it's recommended to only use this for command and not for shell command. Now with this in place, I can come back over here and when I try to run the build, now it works the way that it's supposed to. Now one last way that you could solve this 
outside of the purview of Sublime. And we leave this one to last for a couple of reasons. One, how you do it is dependent entirely on the operating system that you're using and even the version of the operating system to a large extent. So it's hard to or impossible to cover all the possible bases for this. But generally what you have to do is modify your system so that the location of the program that you're interested in is in that path environment variable so that you don't have to do the thing where you modify it here. So for our purposes I'm going to comment that line out. So we're back to, oh, we'll even uh, switch this back to shell command here for our purposes. Come back to here now. This should not work, right? The ultimate goal is to have the location of T CC down in that list of paths down there. Now, in the general case, if you're just doing stuff from within Sublime, doing it one of the other ways we just mentioned is faster and easier and will work depending on no, no matter what operating system you're on without having to do anything special. But let's say I also want to run TCC from a command prompt as well. Uh, a good example of this is people that are using Python want to be able to run Python from the command prompt. For, and in that case, modifying the build system in Sublime doesn't help anybody. You need to modify the system. Now, I happen to know I'm on Windows 10. If I hit the uh, command or the Windows key S key here, I can type path. And we get this item that says edit the system environment variables. Pick that one. We get this dialog box where we can say we want to edit environment variables. Now we get this box. There are two different sets. These are the variables specific just to me. And these are the variables that are system wide. And I can go ahead here and just, just for my own purposes, click on path, click on edit. Here's the items that I personally have added to my path just for me. And I can say I want a new item, and the item I want is D program files TCC, that path we've always been using. And this time I'm using forward slashes because this isn't JSON. And once that's done, I can hit OK there, and OK there, and OK there. Now I've modified the path. Should all work, right? Let's see. And no, no, it doesn't work. And the reason for that is it's a technical thing, but the path of a is part of the environment of the program and the environment of a program is initially set up when that program is first executed. So now that we've modified the path, anything that's already running isn't going to notice it until that program is restarted. So what we actually have to do is quit and restart Sublime. We can go up to the file menu and pick exit. Now we're going to have to go ahead and click on the button and fire it up again. And now when I hit the build. Now it works. Now this is how you do it on Windows 10, depending on what version of Windows you're on. It's the same general process, but how you get to that panel for environment variables is slightly different. If you're on Linux, then you're going to want to modify your user RC file, like your bash RC to modify the path in there. And if you're on Mac OS, you do uh, a similar thing. I recommend using Google to figure out how that part works. Now, the last common problem that you have is trying to execute a program that requires you to enter user input. And we're not going to cover that here, as I said, because that's a more complicated topic. That's a topic for another video. But this is the most common problems that we see in the forum and on Stack Overflow regarding build systems and how they work. And now I know this video has been particularly long, but this is one of those topics that really is the most common problem that I have seen. I've been using Sublime since 2016. I've been on the forum since then. I've been on Stack Overflow. These problems, by far, outnumbering every other problem that I've ever seen anybody report on Sublime, how come my programs don't work you know, in a build system. So I thought I'd really wanted to give this one a, a better treatment. But as we can see, the actual solutions to these are really actually very simple when you understand what's going on behind the scenes and how it's all supposed to work. So thank you so much for watching. If you've actually gotten this far, gold star for you. And uh, please thumb and subscribe if you found these videos helpful. And as always, of course, leave comments and questions or suggestions for future videos down there in the, uh, the comment section or 
on Twitter. I'm hedging my bets that I got it right this time.